Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. Want to improve your organization's customer service? Looking for insider tips to knock your customer socks off? Then you're in the right place. Here's your host, Yannick Grant. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, we have with us Ryan J. Lester, Senior Director of Customer Experience Technologies at LogMeIn. His team and Ryan own the strategic development and implementation for the go-to-market plan for customer experience and digital engagement offering across their platforms, chatbots, virtual assistants, and workforce optimization products. He is passionate about making new technology easy and helping any size company unlock the potential of AI and bots. Prior to his role at LogMeIn, Ryan held various sales, marketing, and product positions at Intel Corporation, Cisco Systems, and Eton Corporation. He has a passion for making new technology accessible and approachable. So plug your earphones in, get comfortable, and let's dive right in. Welcome, Ryan. Yeah, great. Wonderful to be here. Looking forward to our conversation today, and thank you so much for having me. Awesome. So Ryan, could you share a little bit about yourself? How is it that you, and you seem to have a diverse background, sales, marketing, product development, and now you're into customer experience technologies. Tell us how your journey has been and how it has gotten you to where you are today. Yeah. So uh, even though I'm an only child, uh, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very much a people person. I'm energized by people. I love solving problems. The way I really describe myself is kind of the, the head of an engineer and the heart of a, a marketer or, or a, a, you know, a customer centric person. Mm -hmm. And so I love tackling new challenges, but I also love staying close to the customer because at the end of the day, you know, you want to solve their problem and you want to make their life better. And that's what, you know, keeps you in business and, you know, drives uh, your organization. And so throughout my career, I started out in the world of sales and really learned a lot there. And then I, you know, I started spending more time in the product world and then really kind of landed on this intersection of customer experience where, you know, understanding the customer's journey, the friction points, why they buy from you, how you can make that experience better, um, really is something that drives my passion. And so I've been doing this for a number of years and I really love doing that at Log Me In, uh, really helping us as a company, one, create better experiences for our customers, but two, create technology that customers of ours can use to deliver better experiences. So it's, it's really a, a wonderful space. I, I find there's lots of big challenges to solve and it gives me a lot of interesting work to do each day. Awesome, very good. So... Everybody pretty much know where globally, many of our many businesses are forced, even if they didn't have digital presence, they're pretty much forced to create some level of digital presence. Or if they had digital presence, but they maybe weren't optimizing it in its best form, they pretty much have to be putting a lot of energy in that space now because, you know, people want to minimize on their face to face interactions just for being safe. Yes. Um, I found, you know, just based on my experiences, sometimes these digital experiences that we have, they cause you to have to exert a whole lot of energy and, and, and it's not a smooth experience. It's not effortless. So could you share with us maybe three to five things based on your experience that if you have a digital platform that you are facilitating your service delivery or product delivery through, how you can make that an effortless or a frictionless experience for your customer? What, what kind of things do you need to look at in your journey to manifest that kind of um, result? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I, I think you're spot on that there's kind of two reasons why digital really maybe hasn't kept up or it often can feel like a second class experience. Mm -hmm. And the one reason is because oftentimes it's under invested or, you know, it's not a top priority. So, you know, we focus on things like in person and phone and email, because those are all the, the more established, higher volume. Right. Um, but too often, we don't approach the right problem. So we often say, well, we have this new technology, we have chat, or we have messaging channels, or, you know, we have AI. And we try to just take the technology and then go uh, just apply it versus being very specific about the problem we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to just good customer experience practice of, you know, at the end of the day, what is the thing that the customer needs help with? And where is those friction points or where is their high customer effort? And let's go understand the problem first, then try to understand the solution. And so I think that's often where companies get caught up is they're, they're looking, they're taking technology and they're just looking to apply it versus saying rather what's our problem and how can technology make it better? Mm -hmm. And so, 
So to give you some real world examples of that, one really simple thing we've seen in you know the the challenges around COVID nineteen is that information and policies are changing at a very rapid pace. And something as simple as maybe the the hours of your office, or when are you you know what are the rules around coming into a physical branch or a physical store, or even you know are, are your return policies changed or your shipping policies changed. Um, in the current state, you know, that's not really a great thing to have somebody have to call in to find out. People don't want to wait on on hold. They don't have to go through the effort. So either you probably have a customer that's churning because they don't want to go through the effort or you have an upset customer because they went through the process and they can't figure out an answer. Mm -hmm. So one simple thing you could do is to say, let's modernize our FAQ page. We all have that kind of old, I, I call it like grandma's attic. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we all have that part of our website where it's like frequently asked questions and it's meant to be helpful, but oftentimes it's really not focused on, it's underinvested. And so now we can take a technology like AI, um, maybe even something like a, like a simple bot, and we can really spruce that content up. And it's not to say we need to update all of it. So we don't need to take every single article, every piece of content and breathe new life into it. Mm -hmm. But maybe we take our top 10 intents or questions coming into the contact center or to our customer service teams. And we put that into a better, more AI powered support center page or a, a, a simple bot. Now, all of a sudden, all those questions are being answered in more real time. So people are getting faster, more consistent 24 hour answers. And now our teams are freed up to spend time more interesting things. Mm -hmm. And so really it comes down to think about what's the problem you want to solve and how can this newer technology, these digital technologies make it better. And there's other examples in, for example, leveraging things like messaging channels. So WhatsApp is very popular, Facebook Messenger. Um, it's very easy to stand these channels up and put something like a very simple bot or even have your live agents leverage those channels mm -hmm. so that rather than making the customer find your website and look it up and wait on hold, they can ask some simple questions over a messaging channel that they're already in, that they're you know conversing with their loved ones who maybe they haven't seen or that they're you know posting the, the latest image of them making maybe something fun in their kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're already there. So now you, rather than forcing the customer to come to where you are, you're going to where they are today. Mm. So there, there's lots of these great examples of, once again, understanding the problem, you know, is the problem access to information? Is it, you know, engaging the customer where they are today? Is it consistency? Being clear on what's the problem and then applying that right technology to solve it. Mm. So Ryan, could you share with us maybe a few things that companies could do to find out what the problem is? Is it a case where they need to, like, how would you know what the problem is? Should I just sit down in my office as a customer experience strategist or specialist at my company and say, okay, I'm going to think of, you know, what I think the problem is and make a solution? Or should it be a case where the customers, you're kind of watching what they're saying, listening to what they're saying, identifying based on previous conversations what they're asking for, and use that data to inform your decisions to solve the problems? Yeah, so you're both are correct. It's probably more 80% the second and 20% the first. Right. So I think, so I think certainly there's lots of information out there. You know, we, we can take call records. We can take survey information. If you have something like web chat already, you can take all those web chat uh, logs and look through that data. So there's a ton of information that we already often have around our organization. And then now it becomes using that data to then drive our decision. And it's not always that the data will tell us the answer it's sometimes that the data will just tell us what's the next test we want to do. It, it you know, in the world of um, you know, scientific method, it defines our hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So we say, oh, based on you know what we're hearing from our customer service agents or customer service employees, you know, these are the top five things that they feel like are the most friction that they get a lot of call volume on, or that customers feel frustrated. And then we can say, okay, if that's what we think is the problem, let's build a hypothesis. What what do we think could be causing it? And then let's go try and test that. Um, both validating that the problem is really there and then two ways we can uh, uh, correct the problem. So I think you're spot on that things like, you know, NPS scores, post uh, interaction surveys, transcripts, there's a ton of information that often we already have um, or are very easy to stand up that can help point us to those challenges. Mm -hmm. but, but back to your original point, I think it also isn't bad to just sit and have kind of those, those moments of reflection to say, well, Here's something I think is a problem, um, you know, because oftentimes we're, you know, very much in the middle of all these things. We're kind of in the weeds. Mm -hmm. And so it can be nice to say, I think this is a problem. Let's go once again, try and test it. So, you know, I, I think we have a challenge maybe around, you know, how we do traditional customer service or 
um, how we do returns. It feels like there's a lot of you know effort and energy around that from a customer's perspective. Let's go set up a test and try that out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not always going to come to light immediately from the data we have. Mm -hmm. It's also okay to kind of have as, as an expert your perspective and then go test and learn. Right. And in terms of it, you, you mentioned, you know, just testing and developing a hypothesis. It's critical for us to solve the problem, right? Because all businesses yes. going going to business to solve a problem. You know, if you sell yes. a product or a service, you're really solving a problem for someone. So we're operating in this new realm and employees play a critical role, especially if you have employees in the business. They are a lot of times are the front facing persons who interface with the customers on a daily basis. How about integrating them into the solution as well? Get helping them, asking them to help you solve the problem. Because I think a lot of times they have the solutions themselves, but then they're not the change makers or the policy makers. I, yeah, I love that. I couldn't, I could not agree with you more. So there's an interesting project we had done uh, with um, a white goods uh, retailer, so someone that sold like refrigerators, ovens, etc. Um, in the in the UK, they're called AO.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're r rapidly growing. And many of their frontline employees, to your point, the people working with uh, those customers had really good perspective. They had really good sense of where the challenges were, where it was hard for them to get their job done, where the customers felt pain. And they created a project where they got them actively involved. Mm. And what they did, um, this is a little more advanced. I think it's certainly something most people could do, but you know, it'd be more for like a mid-sized business, um, is they created a uh, technology that faced the agents, so an improved knowledge knowledge base, mm -hmm. and they actually put a chatbot in front of it. So rather than having um, something that faced the customer and answered the customer question, this answered their frontline employees' questions. Mm -hmm. So if someone said, hey, I have a question around, you know, the return policy for this product, or does this product come in stainless steel? Or, you know, I see it, it's in electric. Does it also come in gas? Mm. Um, as they're on the phone or they're in, you know, interacting with these customers, they could quickly interact with this bot and get a very quick answer. Brilliant. And yeah, it's wonderful. And so what's nice is one, to your point, they identified the problem. They started to define the solution. But then two, what was really nice out of this is they also started to curate the content so that, you know, you everybody has great experts across their organization. Mm -hmm. In the current world, it's often like, you know, you go bu bump your elbow up to the person and say, hey, I got this really tough question. Mm -hmm. I, know you're, I know you're gonna have the answer, but that doesn't scale. So the nice thing is by leveraging something like AI or, or a knowledge base is now all of a sudden when that expert enters the right answer, now everybody, not just the person next to them that can bump them with their elbow has access to that information. Wow. So so to your point, I think you're, you're, you really hit on something critically important of, one, they know where the problems are. Two, they often have the energy and enthusiasm to fix it. And three, they often have the expertise to fix it. And then the question becomes, how do you turn that into a, a micro fix versus a macro fix where it you know, impacts every employee? Yeah, agreed. Wow, that's beautiful. Knowledge base and having that resource material. And you're right. I mean, sometimes it's just that one person who has all of the information, but sometimes they're not always accessible. So why not have that information accessible to every single person in the organization that they can type in and get that information real time and pass it on to the customer? I love that. Yeah, agreed. And I think it just really becomes this. And what's exciting too is there's this great reinforcing loop that happens where one, now every frontline employee has access to that. So they feel like their job is better and easier and they're getting what they need to be successful. But two, as employees enter in that information, they're feeling empowered because they're helping the whole organization. Yeah. So it's this great kind of flywheel effect of, you know, people feel empowered, they feel energized, they're getting what they need to do their job better. But then they also can help, you know, the next round of employees as they're making that content you know, more accessible and better over time. So yeah, we, we've seen really great results of that. And once again, that could be an employee facing set of content. It could be customer facing content and it's relevant to the digital world, the physical store as that kind of reopens um, and certainly the contact center. Right. So there's lots of great kind of directions as a CX practitioner, you can kind of point this this uh, this technology and these capabilities to, to drive improvements. Great, great. So in relation to chatbots now, Ryan, I was listening to a webinar recently 
uh, some of the panelists were customer experience practitioners, as you mentioned. And um, one of the things they said, I've never had the experience myself, but I can see it happening where you start a conversation on someone's website along your journey um, in that experience with the chat bot. And so it's gotten to a point now where it needs to be escalated. The bot can't continue that interaction yes. anymore. And so when it's escalated to human interaction, it's almost like the customer has to repeat everything they told the bot. All the information that the bot would have, you know, asked them for, they're basically having to get regurgitate all of that information over again. How can companies ensure that when they implement these systems, they implement it in such a way again that you don't feel frustrated? Because that would be the equivalent of me calling a company, speaking <laughs> to somebody on the phone, being transferred to somebody else, and I have to repeat myself all over again. It's just happening you now in a digital experience to human. Yeah, you're spot on. This is so we use a term at LogMeIn called harmony, mm -hmm. and it's a harmony between the the bot, the agent, and the customer. And you have to have all of them kind of you know singing the same song right. or working off the same sheet of music. And I think you're spot on. And so that's a terrible experience. And and just to your point, it's just like if you call into a call center and you talk with someone and like, oh no, I need to transfer you. And then you get to the next person, and they're like, hi, how can I help you? Um, it's maddening. <laughs> So Terrible. what, so what we, what we specifically do at LogMeIn is that's actually one seamless conversation. So as you're in that little, uh, chat window, and that could be a chat window that's, you know, Facebook messenger or WhatsApp, or it could be inside of an app. Like for example, if your bank had an app or it could be on a website, if the bot starts a conversation and, you know, it's set to do certain things. And if it can't accomplish those, it can then pull in a live agent. Um, what's nice is when the technology is done correctly is that agent then can see the transcript of all the things that have happened previously. Right. Uh, and it can, and they can look through and say, Oh, I see, you know, where we're at now. Um, also what, what's interesting about technology is it also is, should be working in the background. So the bot doesn't go away. It's just that when the agent's talking to the customer, the bot now is working behind the scenes, helping the agent. Mm. So if a customer asks a question around, um, you know, I have a question about you know, a certain type of checking account. Mm -hmm. um, the bot has information it knows about that account and can pull that information up. So one that can just be a good reference for the the agent, so mm -hmm. they know, or they can copy if they're if they're chatting in chat, they can copy and paste that information in and not have to go look it up for themselves. Yeah. So so you're spot on that the right way to do this is have it be all one seamless conversation, and that when the agent is pulled in, they're given the context and the background on you know how that customer is doing where they're at in their journey and what problem they're trying to solve so that is the best way to do it and and really to me if a platform doesn't offer that capability i would really kind of second guess them mm -hmm. um, because really any of the kind of best in breed platforms offer this capability around that seamless integration between bot and, and human yeah all right. Now, you mentioned that, well, I mentioned at the beginning in reading a bio that you work at a company called Log Me In. Could you tell us a little bit about Log Me In and what it is that they do? What problems are they solving for their customers? Yeah, great question. So Log Me In, it's a fun company. It's, it was founded here in Boston, where I live, um, and uh, went public uh, in uh, 2013, um, actually a little before that. And, uh, and we have three different businesses. Uh, we focus on communications and collaboration. So products like GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar uh, really focus on how we help people work better together. We have an identity and access business, um, which is focused on how do you connect to devices securely. Mm -hmm. um, and that has a product called LastPass, which maybe you're familiar with, but it's a, it's a great product for organizing all your passwords across all the different websites you go to. Oh, great. Um, yeah, it's yeah, called LastPass. Uh, and then I work in our customer engagement and support business is really focused on technology around helping brands better engage with their customers. And so we have a product called Bold360, which is focused on uh, digital engagement. So, you know, in many cases, you know, people have phone capabilities, uh, they have maybe email capabilities, but, you know, digital is still new and emerging. And, and I think to your earlier point, COVID-19 is accelerating that. Mm -hmm. Um but we have a, a platform that really helps companies rapidly accelerate digital. So that could be chat, it could be messaging, it could be AI-based uh, support center pages or dynamic search bars. But basically it's saying there's all this wealth of capabilities that come in digital. And, and the nice thing about them is they're usually more readily available. Mm -hmm. um, they're available 24 hours a day. They're more extensible, so you can put them in more places like in an app 
or you know uh, in the social uh, social channels, um, and they're also often less costly to manage, in the sense of either an agent can do more, so mm -hmm. they can be on more conversations at once, or they're just lower cost to deliver, and so there's a really a kind of a net. It's like a win-win-win of the customer wins because it's easier for them to use it. The agent wins because they're more productive and efficient. And the brand wins because it delivers a better experience. And so we've been in this space for a number of years. And and we, we you know, I like to say we drink our own champagne. <laughs> so, so, you know, we have our own uh, chat bots and experiences on our website. So, you know, GoToMeeting has a chat bot and LastPass has a chat bot and our Bolt360 product does. So it's also fun for me as a practitioner because I have my own little kind of test beds where we can try different things and different experiences and um, test and learn and, and share those insights. All right. So you basically provide um, that integration for the, the companies that you serve as it relates exactly to the right. different platforms that they may be communicating with their customers on. So one central place where you can navigate all of that customer experience. Exactly right. So basically all of your those digital engagements are housed in one location. So for once again, for you to get insights out of, improve the content, improve the customer journey. So you can think about it kind of as your, your um, one-time investment to really accelerate your digital experience. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So we'll definitely have the link for Bold360 in the show notes of this episode for any of our listeners who have businesses that want to take advantage of this wonderful um, software that exists. That's great. Wonderful. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and I imagine you service customers not just in the United States, correct? Yeah, we have global customer base um, all over. Um, so all over North America, Europe, Asia, um, India. Um, so yeah, so we certainly service customers. And we, we support um, 15 languages nat natively with the chatbot and 88 languages more broadly. Wow. So uh, this technology can work quite well, um, really, in, in, in many, many applications. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. All right, Rand. So tell us, how do you stay motivated every day? Oh, that's great. So uh, I a couple things. I told you earlier, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. So I love interacting with people. So that is a huge motivator for me. So just, you know, inspiring those around me and bringing the best out of them and uh, kind of passing the energy back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Um, two, I really love solving customer problems. So I get very energized around thinking about our customers' challenges and improving how we can solve them today and into the future. Mm -hmm. um, and then three, I really love consuming and creating content. So I also do my own podcast and I really enjoy listening to podcasts. So I find that, you know, the creation and consumption of content really energizes me as well. Wow. Awesome. I didn't know you had a podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Uh, it's called CX Next. Um, oh, yeah. So I so will we... definitely have to tap into that because that sounds like it's right up my avenue. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we we recently just changed it. We were doing I was doing a podcast around AI and um, and we were talking a lot about CX topics. And then we, so about two months ago, we we changed it from AI IRL to CX Next. So the podcast is a little new, but we love it. I really enjoy it. We also do a weekly video series also under the CX Next name, uh, CX Next Live. Um, but I find like these kinds of conversations are just, you know, once again, very energizing and interesting and you get great perspectives doing them. Very good. And where are your lives hosed on your website or through a social media platform? Uh, so, so most of it's through, we do it across all, but most of our engagements on LinkedIn, uh, okay. but we do also post them to YouTube um, and Facebook as well. Okay. Awesome. So I will look for those links and definitely show, share them in the show notes of this episode. So that would be additional resources for our listeners from this. Episode. That's wonderful. All right. Can you share with us what's one online resource tool, website, or app that you absolutely cannot live without in your business? So I actually have two, one's older, well, not old, but one that I've <laughs> used for a long time and one's newer. Um, so I love a tool called Asana. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I, I I'm a big project management person. Um, so I, I, you know, my, my team loves and hates Asana because <laughs> I am always putting things in Asana, but I, I really love it. Uh, it can be a little complicated at first. They, they may not like me hear me saying that, but there is a little bit of a learning curve, mm -hmm. but it's a wonderful way to organize work um, across a team, especially a, a cross-functional team. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And then just recently, and recently being in the last like two or three months, um, there's a new tool called Rome Research, R-O-A-M. Mm. It is, I think they just, I was in a beta program and I think they just now started to offer a subscription. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically creating a knowledge graph of information. It, it's, it's a little bit hard to describe, 
but um, it uses like tagging and like, like hashtags mm-hmm. to start to better organize information. Um, and if you're into research, so I do a lot of primary research. Uh, it's an amazing tool for organizing your work and your thoughts. And you have a lot of aha moments out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd, I highly recommend if you're into the world of research and doing research, or even, even just if you, ha- you find that you're writing a lot and you're trying to organize thoughts right um Rome research is wonderful um, so, so, so that's something that let me see if I, I understand carefully what you're saying so is it that Rome research is using tags and hashtags to kind of bring data that you are pulling from the web together or is it more so kind of putting your thoughts in order based on what you plop in the application yeah so it's more the latter so it, it's it's more of a a tagged based tool for organizing disparate information. So think about it more as like, how would you organize the thoughts into your head into a kind of a, a more structured mechanism? Okay, got you. Uh, but it's very good in the sense of like, so I'll, for example, I'll give you is we've been doing some primary research on different buying centers uh-huh. um, and value drivers for those buying centers and experience like customer journey mapping and some other things. And often we'll, we'll do three or four different research projects um, and sometimes the connection between those research projects is hard in the sense of they may have different goals and the data in them may be a bit different. So Rome can sometimes help with taking those disparate pieces of work and better mapping them together. And they they have these visualization tools of like, how is this project connected to this project and connected to this project? And it starts to open up your eyes to connections that going back to your point of sitting at your desk and having that aha moment. Right. Rome can sometimes be quite good at helping you think through some of those things. Okay. I actually was looking it up while you were speaking a while ago. And the, the description that they use on their website is it's a note taking tool for networked thought. So I, I yes. guess, as you said, you know, you, you plot, you put things down and then they're able to kind of um, integrate and map and connect what, you know, a, a easier flow so that it gives you a better, a bigger picture, a clearer picture of what it is that you're trying to put together. Yeah, and the other thing they have that's nice, I mean, we could, we could probably spend an hour on this, but they, uh, <laughs> they they give you a daily page. And I actually find that's one of the best things they do for a number of reasons. One is you have a, a page every day that appears. And then, I, you know, for me, I'm like, what's the three things I must get done today? You know, mm. obviously I want to get more than three things done, but like, what are the three things I know I'm going to get done? And then also you can then map forward and back of here's what I want to get done tomorrow, or here's what I thought I was going to do three days ago and why didn't I do it? So it can start to create a really nice cadence of like giving you a little more discipline in your days and in your programs and in your research. Yeah. Um, so in that case, I, I really enjoyed it. it. It takes some getting used to also, um, but it's been very powerful. All right. So we'll have both those resources in the show notes of this episode. Now, Ryan, can you share with us maybe one or two books that have had the biggest impact on you? It could be a book that you read recently or maybe something you read a very long time ago, but it still left a very indelible mark on your success and your journey. Yeah, of course. So uh, two books that are very different, but um, but both had a big impact on me. So one is a book called Made to Stick. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's by Heath, Heath and Heath. And it's really about how do you think about products and it, and I extended to more even experiences that are very sticky. So mm-hmm. things that people remember, they want to come back to, they really kind of, you know, love. Right. Uh, and so I think it's a great book on, I think oftentimes we, we get caught up in the a single wow moment, like the monument mm-hmm. versus the thing that drives people to come back. And so to me, it's like the difference between like the Super Bowl ad, which is one time and memorable versus that experience that people just crave. They always want to come back for more. Right. And so I, I, I really feel like Made to Stick is a great way to, um, you know, think about the world of building products, solutions, experiences that are very sticky mm-hmm. and drive your, your customers to want to come back. And at the end of the day, even if you're in customer service and your goal is to, you know, reduce in, inbound, reduce costs, you still want to make it a great experience so someone remembers it and wants to come back again the next time. Agreed. All right. So that's one. Do you have a second one? Yep. Uh, and the second one is, um, it's it's actually an older book, but I, I still always love, it's more of a psychology, um, but Ogilvy on advertising. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't trained as a marketer, but you know, I, now I spend a lot of my time in the world of marketing mm-hmm. and just, I, I love these older books that survived really well. And a lot of it's around psychology of how people think, why they make decisions, 
Um, but I, what I like Ogilvy on advertising is if you read a psychology book, oftentimes they're, they're hard. You know, it's like not a, not always an easy thing to process, mm -hmm. but Ogilvy on advertising is like, you know, it's the world of advertising and, and we all can relate to advertising because every day we're, we're, we're given ads. So it's a really nice book that kind of talks about the science behind it and why people make decisions they make and the psychology behind decision making. So it's a classic that I think is definitely worth reading because I think it also then very much applies to the world of customer experience where mm -hmm. it's how do people think about decisions? How do they weigh factors? What's the psychology around decision making? You know, because I think we often get caught in the tactics, the journey map, the, you know, the average handle time. There's all these metrics we're caught up in. Mm -hmm. But but at the end of the day, people make decisions oftentimes, you know, based more on themselves and their psychology than they do around, um, you know, the journey map we've defined for them. Right. Okay. So it's Og Ogilvy on advertising and um, Ogilvy on advertising is actually by David Ogilvy, right? Yep, David Ogilvy. Yes, he's one uh -huh. of the uh, early kind of pioneers in the world of advertising. And then we have Make It Stick, or was it Made to Stick? Um, it's Made to Stick, and it's by Heath and Heath. Ah, Chip Heath and Dan Heath. Exactly right. Yeah, got it. Okay, so just wanted to make those clear, so we can have those available in the show notes of the episode. All right, Ryan, can you share with us one thing that's going on in your life right now? Either something that you're working on to develop yourself or your people. So that's a great question. Um, so, you know, with everything going on in the world uh, right now, it's you know a timely question. Our specific team is working a lot on how do we help to bring more diversity into the world of tech and specifically into log me in. Um, you know, there's a lot going on right now in the U.S., um, you know, specifically related, related to around violence with the police, yeah. um, especially toward minorities mm -hmm. um, or people of color. So we're spending, I'm spending some time myself, you know, trying to get more involved. There's great organizations here in Boston, like um, Hack Diversity um, and others. We have a, a black employees uh, organization that logged me in. So we, they recently did a, a really um, uh, challenging, but really, you know, impactful discussion around, you know, being a, a black employee and being someone of color. Um, so that's something that we're spending time on to log me in. Um, you know, certainly the U S has made some strides, but there's still a lot of work to be done mm -hmm. on helping to improve diversity, improve access and improve people's lives where, you know, they don't have to fear about going out of their home and, and being killed. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so that's a really recent one. Um, and I think it's really important. And then outside of that, you know, I have two small kids. So I'm always <laughs> thinking about, you know, the broader world and education and everything else. And as you can hear my, my, one of my interns is yelling. I think she has an important thing for me to work on with her. <laughs> Oh, goodness. They're the light of our lives. They are. Yes, they are. All right. Can you tell our listeners where they can find you online? So they've listened to this episode. Um, they're quite intrigued about Bowl 360. They're thinking of checking out Log Me In. And they may even want to connect with you through your podcast or any of the value that you share with your audience and your community. They'd like to join and be a part of that. Where can they find you online? Yeah, that's great. So uh, a couple of different places. Uh, one, you can go, if you're interested in finding out more about Bold, you can go to bold360.com. So that's B-O-L-D 360.com. Mm -hmm. um, I am um, on LinkedIn. That's where I do most of my um, conversations and engagement. Uh, and I'm quite active on LinkedIn. So you can feel free to check me out there uh, as well. Uh, you can, the, the, the URL is the LinkedIn URL slash in Mr. Lester. So I'm a little more formal there. So M I S. <laughs> T E R L E S T E R, and I can send that. You can post it as well. Right. Um, and then we also have our uh, um, a platform that's kind of more of, of you know broader insights on CX called cxnext.com. So if you're bro if you're kind of at the top level and you're just more like, hey, what's going on in the world of CX? Um, you can go to cxnext.com. We do an annual event. We do the podcast. We do the weekly uh, live series. Um, so there's lots of just kind of broad information about the world of CX. Um, I post a lot on LinkedIn, and then obviously you can also check out bolt360.com for more specifics around uh, digital engagement and leveraging a solution like that. Excellent, excellent. So we will have all those links in the notes of this episode. 
So thank you so much, Ryan, for taking time out of your very busy day today to share all of these awesome, awesome nuggets with us. I mean, I gained so much insight and you were just able to be very clear on what strategy, what are some recommendations, what are some practical steps as a business you can actually start looking at to ensure that your journey is effortless and frictionless. But most importantly, it's still allowing the customer to have a really good experience and solve the problem for them. Because again, that's really why people go in business, right? To solve problems. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that, uh, yeah, that going back to our original point of, of our discussion is, you know, it, it's about being customer centric and understanding those customer challenges and then resolving them in a better way. And there's always new ways to do that. And the technology is always great, but it goes back to our, our point of you got to really understand the problem first before you can just define the solution. Mm -hmm. But, but, but in many cases, you know, if you are clear on the problem, the, the technology makes the solution much easier. Yeah. And that's, what's so exciting and energizing for all of us in the world of CX. All right. Okay. So Ryan, before we wrap up one last question we have for you, do you have a quote or a saying that during times of adversity or challenge, you will revert back to this quote or saying, cause it kind of helps to refocus you and just keep you channeled. Yeah, there's always a great one. Um, so uh, there's a short version and then there's a long version. So the, the long version is I love there's a, Ma a Mario Andretti was a very famous race car driver, a, mm -hmm. a Formula One race car driver here in the US. And he has a great quote that says, if you feel like you're under control, you're not going fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, and I always feel like that, that for me is very much a case of like, if you feel like everything's fine and calm, then you probably, especially in the world of technology, you're not, probably not moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. And so the short form version of that with my team is always, I always say sh ship it. And so for me, it's like, if they're like, well, should we do this? Should we not do it? I'm like, always err on the side of shipping it, get it out there. Let the market tell you if it works or doesn't work. You know, you obviously want to have some quality control, but oftentimes better err on the side of let's get in front of the customer and see what they think mm -hmm. versus trying to make it perfect before we get it out the door. Yeah. So, uh, so those are my, always my words of advice to the team of, if you feel like you're completely under control, you're not going quick enough. So let's go ship it out the door. All right. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome quote. All right. So again, Ryan, thank you so much for participating in our episode today. As I guessed, you were an awesome guest. You shared great insights and this episode will definitely add really, really good value to our listeners. I know that for sure because people are just in that space now where they're really looking into their digitization. They're looking into strategies to strengthen that and to really build an experience for their customers online that is second to none. So you are really able to give us greater insight on how we can do that. That was my pleasure. I really enjoyed the conversation as well. And, uh, and I can tell you bring a lot of energy to to, uh, <laughs> to the world of customers and customer experience. So uh, so. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to join our Facebook group, Navigating the Customer Experience Community, or follow us on Twitter at Navigating CX. Until next time, I'm your host, Yannick Grant. Thank you for listening to Navigating the Customer Experience. If you'd like to connect with us even more, please feel free to hop onto Facebook and join our private Facebook group, Navigating the Customer Experience Community. And of course, feel free to follow us on Twitter at NavigatingCX. We also have a new book available on Amazon, The ABCs of a Fantastic Customer Experience. It's available in ebook and paperback. So if you want to increase revenue in your organization, build a stronger service culture, and create employees or develop employees who are really mastering service delivery in your business, you need to grab a copy of this book. Until next time, I'm your host, Yanni Grant. Thanks for listening. For more awesome resources to take your customer service game to another level, head over to navigatingthecustomerexperience.com. See you next time.